Equinor, formerly known as Statoil, rebranded, whole new name. We just had their earnings. Joining us now by phone is Jakob Hegg, the CFO of Equinor, here to discuss the company results. Great to have you with me this morning, sir. So it looks like a good set of results for you. Uh, and you're going to spend $11 billion on CapEx. The market is going to focus on this quite closely. Some people would have expected uh, an uplift in your CapEx. Talk me through your justification of $11 billion. So thank you for, for having us. So yeah, we delivered a solid uh, set of uh, results with adjusted earnings of 4.3 billion, 1.7 of the tax on a strong cash flow from operations. We have experienced a high activity level where we continue to de deliver projects and value enhancing transactions. And uh, the reason for we maintaining the guidance and change of around 11 billion for this year is an increased share of activity in the second half related to completion of Martin Linge, the activity on Johan Kosberg, Johan Sverdrup, Peregrino in Brazil, and the completions of Osta, Hansten and Marines. Um the exploration side of the budget as well. We understand that you're looking at doing about 40 exploration wells, 25 of those, 25 to 30 in Norway. Uh, $1.5 billion on exploration. Why, why have you not upped that number? Exploration has historically been important to us. And uh, big discoveries like Johan Sverdrup is just a reminder of the importance of uh, exploration. We have drilled 10 wells and uh, in the first half and five ongoing. So it's been quite high activity. And we also have activity coming up in the Barents, in UK, in Brazil, uh, Russia, onshore. Um, this is important to maintain uh, due to the value creation that we historically have created from from exploration. And um, we also have uh, exciting things going on in Brazil as an example. So we still have great faith in exploration and we maintain our guiding unchanged. Okay, talk me through the, the, the debt situation for you. Um, obviously, we saw a, a little bit of a, a drop from Q1 through to Q2. Talk me through the debt profile at the moment and your outlook yeah so um, the gearing is slightly up in the quarter with a net debt ratio up from 25 to 27.2 this is due to a negative currency effect on the equity on the knock assets and increase in the working capital due to uh, building more storage and investments um, completing ronco door transaction in brazil and the north Platte in the u.s so we guided on a slight increase uh, in the coming quarter, and this is based on commercial decision and the strengthening of our portfolio. Overall, we are still within the band of 15 to 30 percent, which is our ambition level, and we have strong projections uh, going forward with a net debt ratio uh, potentially below 15 percent in 2020 at the $70 oil. Um, buybacks are something that you have intimated uh, that you have the scope for buybacks is emerging. Can you update the language on that? Can you tighten it up for me? Will there be a buyback before the end of this year? So what we said to the market is that uh, dividend policy remains firm. It's to grow the dividend in line with the underlying earnings. We've also said, that, as, you, as you stated, that uh, the, the, the scope for share buybacks is uh, emerging based on a strong macro environment and the development of our portfolio. But we also said that near term we would continue to strengthen the balance sheet, and that is still the case. So no news on, on the buybacks. No new news. That's going to be a little bit of a disappointment with some of the market out there. Before you go, price of oil, sir, we averaged 75 bucks in Q2. What are we going to do Q3, Q4? What's your price? So fundamentally, the market is more rebalanced, seeing crude oil stocks in Europe close to a five-year average and the U.S. stocks going low. So when we peaked at 80 late May, it was driven more by the paper market, I think, uh, we have experienced volatility, and that's what we are prepared for. We have a 
four and a half billion US dollars lower cost base, uh, a very strong development portfolio. So we are prepared for for volatility going forward. Jakob, we wish you well on the day. Let's see what the market makes of the new of the language and the guidance on the buybacks. The CFO of Equinor joining us for the very latest on the numbers.